Good morning. It is Sunday the 8th of November and today is Remembrance Sunday. Welcome to Shanbrook Evangelical Church and our Sunday morning service. And whether you're watching online through our YouTube channel or whether you're listening through the website or on CD, welcome to you all. If you're joining us for the first time, we give you a special welcome. My name is John and I'm the pastor of Shanbrook Evangelical Church. Today is Remembrance Sunday when we remember the sacrifice of those who gave their lives in both world wars and many other conflicts since. We are thankful to those who've given their lives to defend the freedom of this country, and yet we're sorrowful, sorrowful over our sinfulness that is the ultimate cause of wars. So today, as well as remembering, we want to praise God that he is in sovereign control of all things, and we want to give thanks to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who laid down his life for us so that we can have eternal peace. Jesus said these words. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus Christ laid down his life for us as he died upon the cross, that we might no longer be enemies, but friends with God. So we're going to start our service this morning by singing a hymn of praise to Jesus, a hymn that declares, Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Let's sing together the hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Sublime, all hell redeem 
Our first Bible reading this morning is found in Psalm 46. If you have a Bible, please turn with me to Psalm 46. Now, we looked together at this psalm back at the beginning of lockdown in March. And you might be frustrated with this new second lockdown. If you are, then look with me at Psalm 46 to our God who is our refuge, our God who is with us and our God who is exalted. Psalm 46 is written for the director of music. It's a psalm of the sons of Korah. It's a song. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Well, this is a psalm that expresses confidence and trust in God in the midst of turmoils and trials. Nothing else is truly solid, trustworthy and dependable except our God. So let's come to our God now as we pray. And this morning, Brian is going to lead us in our prayers, after which we're going to sing together the hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And then we'll go over to Samantha for our children's talk. But first over to Brian as he leads us in our prayers. Let us pray. As we enter this time of prayer, we pause to be still, to breathe slowly, to recenter our scattered senses upon your presence, O God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you. Creator God, you made us in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Lord of creation, whose glory is all around us and within us, open our eyes to your wonders that we may see you more clearly. Now we see but a poor reflection, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Holy Father God, we cry out to you. We long to see you face to face, to know you fully. We are in awe that you know us fully, that you knit us together in our mother's womb, that you know every hair on our heads, that you love us so totally and unconditionally. Holy Father God, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption, for in this hope we were saved. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for all the benefits that you have won for us, for all the pains and insults that you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly love you more dearly and follow you more nearly. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. Have mercy on me. Forgive us our sins and help us to forgive those that sin against us. All-powerful and all-loving God, 
we uplift before you those whose lives have been impacted by loss, those whose hearts are broken, and ask that you would hold the pieces of their shattered lives gently in your hands. We uplift before you those who desperately need to be aware of just how close you are. Breathe grace into their souls in a way that will bring them peace, comfort and hope. Lord, hold them as they weep and comfort them in their sorrow and loss, in the isolation that they might experience and in the silence that they might feel. Let the whisper of your presence give them something to hold on to. Dear Father God, we lift to you all those who are struggling, who long to hear a word of hope. Speak peace into their souls, strength into their spirits and faith into their hearts. We pray for those who face, who, who face the greatest challenges in this time, those with underlying health issues, the weak and the elderly, those with disability, those caring for people with special needs, the lonely and the fearful. Lord, may your presence bring strength, hope and peace. We thank you for all those in the public services, those who may be risking their own health to keep us safe those overwhelmed and exhausted by the demands placed upon them. Lord, give them encouragement, energy and perseverance. We pray for wisdom and clarity for all those making key decisions, for the scientists, the medical experts, politicians and public health officials. Dear Lord, in these difficult days, help each one of us to shine for you. Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Father, in your mercy and grace, hear our prayers. Amen. When I
Good morning and welcome to our children's talk. Today it's Remembrance Sunday, isn't it? This is where we remember the many, many people who gave their lives serving our country. Hopefully you will have seen lots and lots of poppies around. We show poppies and sometimes we wear one so that we won't forget all of the lives that were lost and we, so that we can enjoy the freedom that we have today. There were lots of jobs that needed doing during World War One and World War Two, Being in the Army, the Air Force or the Marines. There were people who needed to cook and take care of the injured. There were men and women who did all of the office admin and many, many more jobs. Then there were those men and women and children who helped to keep the country going while so many were caught up in all the extra work the war created. Looking after those affected by bombings, keeping farmlands working, making sure people had food and so much more. It may be that you've got someone in your family that served in the war in one of those ways and it is right that we remember everything they gave up and the hardships that they went through so that the future was better for their children, for them and for us today. Sometimes though it's hard for us to think about war and remember how terrible it was. We may want that part of history to fade away. But even though the war was terrible, it brought peace. Well, this is my mum's verbena. It's lovely. We love verbena. It's a really great plant. But at this time of the year, we do this to it. <gasps> and you might think, that's terrible. What are you doing? You're ruining the plant. You're making it all short. And it may seem terrible what's happening, but actually this is for the good of the plant. If we cut it down like this, next year, <laughs> next year, it will look wonderful. It will grow back even better than it has this year. Sometimes we do things that are, have a cost now but for a benefit later on. Peace at a great cost. Remembrance Day is all about making sure that we don't forget the hard sacrifices that were made and the lives that were lost. We can enjoy peace today can't we? But sometimes we look around and we think all is not at peace. Things are especially tough right now, aren't they? We may be worried about the future as well. As well as remembering the peace that those who served us in the war brought us, I would like to point us to somebody. I would like us to remember somebody who gave their life so that every single person could be at peace. Not at peace with a country or even a nation, but at peace with God. And this one person did pay the price with his life, not just for a time of war, a period um, over many years, but actually peace forever. His name is Jesus, of course. The Bible calls him the Prince of Peace and says this. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15 verse 13. I've absolutely no doubt that those who served in World War I and World War II did it out of love. Love for those around them and love for those in the future. And John tells us that is why Jesus gave his life. The amazing thing with Jesus is that he gave his life for his friends but also he gave his life for his enemies. You see, we're all enemies with God in our hearts because of sin. But Jesus makes it possible for us to be at peace with God, no longer enemies. 
John is right when he says that, that Jesus gave the greatest gift. It's the greatest gift that anyone could give us. What a love, what a cost. Jesus could have been a rich king. He came from the heavens. When he was here, he could have put his feet up, couldn't he? And said, I don't need to work. I can just sit and watch TV. Maybe I'll read the paper. I've had a hard day. I think I'll just have a slice of cake. But Jesus didn't do any of those things, did he? Jesus gave up everything, including his life. Well, I know that many of the servicemen and women who gave so much um, also knew and loved Jesus and knew that Jesus had given his life for them. They had a hope for the future, just as they wanted hope for those around them at the time. So today, let's be really thankful and grateful for all those who gave their lives and served. And let's thank and praise God too, for the hope that we have of forever peace with God because of Jesus's great, great sacrifice. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for so many who gave their lives, who served in the war so that we might have peace today. And Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks for the Lord Jesus, who gave his life so that we could be at peace with you. We pray that you would help us to remember the great cost that Jesus gave for us. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Brian, and thank you to Samantha. To lead us up to 11 o'clock and our two minutes silence, we're going to watch a DVD now that's been produced by SASRA, the Soldiers and Airmen Scripture Reader Association. SASRA is an evangelical Christian organisation that employs ex-military men and women as scripture readers. They provide spiritual and pastoral support to current serving personnel. In our DVD, they've collaborated with Glenn Scrivener, who's giving a spoken word poem, and it will also have some contributions from some current scripture readers. If I should die, think only this. A bullet flew by that did not miss. What story of the war is told? Romance bright or horror cold? Triumph's tale or tragic loss? The iron or the wooden cross? Lost lament or victor's boast? Full brass band or lone last post? Heroes, villains, cowards, kings, it's war. It's all these things. It's us, unleashed for good and ill. The gallant heart, the savage will. A Kaiser's pride, a nation's fear, a global greed. It's all in here. What causes war, the old book asks. Beyond the history, beneath the masks, begins a want becomes a will, demands its way, prepares to kill. The wars we mark as long ago are close to home. They're all we know. What ceases war? The pressing question. What can halt inborn aggression? To end all wars and retribution, war itself is no solution. Can terror end all terror now? Brute force subdue itself and bow? Can darkness drive out darkened dread? Or death extinguish death instead? We need to interrupt the spiral, find the anti-retroviral. The story is told of anti-Zeus, a god of peace, made human truce. Into our world, into our midst, a walking, talking armistice. A king now meek, his power made weak, to stand and turn the other cheek. To 
take the blow, absorb disgrace, then rise to give again his faith in grace undimmed and arms unfurled to bless and pacify the world. And you, to sweet surrender brought, forgiveness for your battles fought, peace to pass to every soul, then warfare ceased from pole to pole. Sazra Army and Air Force scripture readers work alongside chaplaincy teams in the British Army and Royal Air Force. They all know men and women who have paid the ultimate price. Today they speak about how they offer peace to those men and women who serve their country in the armed forces. As we pause and remember them, we are indebted to the sacrifice that they have made. Jesus himself said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And through faith in him alone, we can receive life, salvation, and the forgiveness of sins. Every soul that comes to Jesus wholeheartedly for peace will have peace. As scripture readers, we hold out peace to soldiers. We offer them the gospel as we find it in the Bible. I get to hand out little St. John's Gospels. Little St. John's Gospels uh, that contain wonderful news for soldiers. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Can you imagine fighting a battle that has already been won in victory? All you have to do is accept that victory. And as I walk throughout this military cemetery here in Aldershot, I am and will ever be thankful for the sacrifice of the men and women that they made to give me the peace I have today. My hope is placed in the one called the Prince of Peace. I found that hope when I was a serving soldier. I found that by faith I was justified and given peace with my God. Well, it's now 11 o'clock. Will you please stand with me for our two minutes silence? It may seem a little strange this morning to be standing in your living room, but please stand with me so we can stand together. As we remember this morning, we're going to go down to the memorial bench and the silhouette of the Tommy soldier in the village. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us pray. Lord Almighty, we humble ourselves before you and we worship you because you alone are the living God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for such great love. And thank you, Jesus, for giving up your life on the cross so that sinners might be saved and know everlasting rest. We give thanks for our military personnel, chaplains and the chain of command. We remember, too, those who have died in service for the United Kingdom. Help each of us to understand the cost of war. May we never take our liberty for granted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Lord and Father, please have mercy upon us and forgive us for our sins. We have filled your world with bitter violence and harmed what you declared good. Please raise up peacemakers across the earth. Bless those who strive to end war and conflict. Provide reconciliation between nations. Bring calm to local communities. Restore damaged families. Please hold back the evil of hatred and division. Please, Lord God, help us to remember those profoundly affected by war and conflict, those who live with pain and injury. We think especially of those men and women of our armed services who have made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom and security. Please draw near to all those who mourn. Lord God Almighty, cause our hearts to be filled with your benevolence and grace. May your people trust in the promised return of Jesus Christ the Saviour. Please give us strength to proclaim your good news and grow in faith each day. For your sake, we ask all these things. Amen. Well, please do take a seat. And as you sit down, we're going to watch a song that's been produced by Phil Moore, Colin Webster and Tim Chester. It is a remembrance hymn. Uh, the words have been sent out and they'll also appear on the screen. Let's watch this remembrance hymn as we reflect and remember. 